Hello, everybody. Welcome to the State of the Union Winter Edition 2023. I'm very excited to be here today. Uh, we have a special guest, Marcus, who I believe will be coming on camera in just a moment, uh, as well as Mia. Um, before we get into introductions, I just wanted to first uh, wish everyone a very happy holiday season. Um, it's it's always wonderful. The snow is falling. New Year's is coming. Uh, so it's one of my favorite times of the year. Uh, a couple of quick normal um, administrative points to make. If anyone has any questions, there is a Q&A button uh, where you can add your questions. We will find time at the end to answer as many of them as you as we can. But if we can't, we will be following up with an email, as we always do, uh, with answers to all of the questions. We are also recording this, and we'll make the recording available. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the introductions, and I will kick things off. My name is Aaron Stillman. I've been uh, with Treasurer for about four months now. If you can't tell from my accent, I am originally from the United States. However, I'm now living the European dream in Luxembourg and working with Treasurit as the head of product marketing. Uh, if I can hand things over to Marcus to introduce yourself, please. Well, there's not a lot to say. I'm a lawyer uh, practicing in, in Vienna and in Cyprus and Madrid in Italy, with a tiny little office in the Emirates as well. Um, so uh, frequently traveling and flying and uh, for that purpose, uh, Tresorit and its uh, tools are very useful. So that's why I'm here. And maybe someone to know what I do and we'll see. All right, that's great. Okay. And Mia? Hello, my name is Mariana Horvat. I am the UX research team lead here at Tresorit, leading a small but determined team of researchers to make sure that our product discovery and development processes is as useful for users as can be. All right. So just to talk about the agenda, you know, these State of the Union webinars are really an opportunity for us to communicate to the market all of the hard work uh, that's been happening within the R&D organization. So all of the product managers and engineers and UX researchers and designers, uh, a really, you know, tight knit group of individuals who've been producing uh, products and features and enhancements. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, Treasurit eSign, which has been out in the market for a, a little bit now, uh, introducing simple e-signature, uh, Swiss qualified e-signature, and we're now very happy to be communicating about EU qualified signatures. We're also going to talk about secure digital evidence file sharing, uh, which is a use case Um composing of a number of different feature functionalities that Treasurit offers, uh, including uh, several enhancements that we've made over the past several months. We're going to talk about the unified folder experience, uh, which is something that's been cooking and being communicated and worked on for a while, and we've reached a, a major milestone, as well as uh, a Microsoft Outlook plugin policy, which is uh, more for administrators, and, and we'll talk about that. Uh, the point that I really wanted to drive home, which you can see in the bottom right hand corner, is we uh, prioritize and do a lot of work based on feedback from you, our customers, as well as the market as we're engaging prospects. So of these four agenda topics that we'll be talking about, in total, there was a bit over 200 feature requests that were delivered that have led to the uh, products and features we'll be talking about today. For our customers who have joined, if you don't know, within the product itself, there is a way for you to submit your feature requests and be able to follow along and engage our product organization. Um, and it's a very useful tool. So if you're not already using it, I really encourage you to do so. And let us hear what you would love to see uh, Treasure it deliver, uh, and we'll be talking about it hopefully at the next State of the Union webinar. Um, since Marcus was, you know, so nice to join us um, and also participate in our early access program for EU qualified e-signature, I thought Marcus, you could just take a minute and talk a little bit about the relevance for you. Well, uh, as I said before, I'm traveling quite a lot. And for me, it's important to be able to sign documents. Well, as a priority, 
to sign documents from everywhere and in a secure way. You know, about five to six, seven years ago, you had you had to go to to a business center, to to the hotel reception, to print out the document, to sign the document. You had your stamp with you, and then you needed a scan and an end. And then on, on the other end, the recipient said, "Well, well what is this? Uh, this is a fake signature. What is it?" Yeah. So. Uh, the e-signature makes uh, business life much easier because you can use your mobile phone, mobile, uh, mobile device, your laptop, every computer you've got access to. And the signature you're using is verified. And the let me say, it, it's not accepted everywhere in the world. Um, in, in my home country, in Austria, I use the digital signature since a couple of years. It's a special edict uh, signature from the Austrian government. Um, also in the UAE, they have a special e-signature uh, version, which works wonderful. And now with the European e-signature, there might really be a big, big step forward to have 250 million people uh, accept the signature without asking, is this fake, is this yours, and then I am. So this, this is uh, actually what, what I'm really excited uh, with the new uh, e-signature. Next to all the other features uh, which are offered by Trezorit, uh, in particular the new ones with the file sharing and the what we already discussed, what I call a, a virtual uh, a data room, a high sophisticated one, so there are a lot of tools which are very useful, which make life easier and communication with your business partners. Uh, it's it's brought to a higher level. Thank you, Marcus. Um, you know, it's really been insightful for me because I'm new to Treasure to have the opportunity to talk with customers like yourself um, in the legal industry as well as under other industries. So I'm learning a lot every day. Um, as Marcus mentioned, and, and I mentioned in the agenda, um, we are introducing, you know, Treasury eSign and additional capabilities around EU qualified signatures. If you're not familiar, just at a high level, uh, EIDIS defines three levels of signatures. You have simple e-signature, which can be used, you know, for a lot of different uh, scenarios. The challenge there, though, is... For example, if you are in the legal industry or if it's something that represents a real high value, like a contract uh, that could be worth hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, the last thing you want is to end up in a court of law and have that signature questioned. And with simple e-signature, there is a scenario where you might need to get an expert coming in and examining the signature and trying to compare it to a handwritten one and validate. And that's not the type of risk that a lot of the Treasure customers are willing to take. Now, in order to offer EU qualified signatures, we partnered with a certified trust provider, Evertrust, and their combined technology with ours allows you to gain the efficiencies that Marcus talked about, as well as having the certification at the end to ensure that it's uh, recognized as EU qualified signatures. At this point, I'd like to hand it over to Mia so she can talk a little bit about the product development life cycle and some of the feedback we've heard from the market and we'll, we'll get to hear from Marcus again. Uh, Mia, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Uh, on this slide, you can see our product discovery and development process depicted. Uh, our uh, e-sign uh, solution, uh, simply signature and EU qualified signatures are good examples of how we think about and build products here at Treasury. First, we focus on market needs and explore use cases, collect and understand feedback. Then we start ideating about the best and most viable solutions and test those with real users. This is a very important part of our process. And then this uh, iterative approach leads us to a concept that uh, we can then develop further and, of course, improve based on feedback again. Here, what we did uh, was, of course, conducting user interviews and usability tests, and it became clear that just as uh, Marcus said previously, there is a need 
for a secure qualified uh, e-signature that is accepted within uh, within the EU. We've been hearing about cases uh, when the preferred solution of one party was not accepted by the other because of confusion around the legal status of the signed document in the country of the partner. Uh, we also discussed cases with users when their regional solution is technically not equipped to deal with the identification documents uh, issued in other regions. Um, such difficulties are evidenced, for example, on uh, one of the quotes you can see on the slide. And here I would also uh, like to ask Marcus to share a bit more about what he just mentioned earlier about the need for QES and how it is useful for your line of work. Well, let, let me think of an example. Um, we are, let's say I'm on the board of a foundation, a trust or a corporate vehicle. And uh, we have to assemble online and we have to sign the minutes of the meeting, which need to be filed with the registry or the court. So I'm, I'm not in the, in the place of the assembly. So what, what can I do? As I said before, I can't even sign a printed paper because it's not accepted. It needs to be an original, which is filed with the court. So what I can do, I can sign uh could do an e-sign uh send it by email to to the to the to the board uh members and the the lawyer files it with the court and it's an original signature and nobody's question so i think it's a very very simple uh, but placative uh, uh, example on how useful e-signatures are and when we only with the e-signatures also, you know, I'm also a litigator. I'm uh, litigating at courts. Uh, in the, the last litigation, the bigger one was at the, the court in London, the High Court in London. Okay, it's very useful. They want, want me to sign uh, the, the minutes of a hearing. Yeah? So I, I don't have to get to Notary Public to get my signature uh, uh, certified or attested. I sign it online. Yeah. And it's totally accepted. Mm. But this this signature was, uh, by the way, that was not uh, the preserved one, the E one, which is quite new. This was the one from the Austrian government, but accepted by the by the court. It was very interesting. But it's on a side note. Yeah. But for the future, as I said before, uh, whatever you can do digitally helps you, uh, brings you forward, saves time, so you gain. Uh, free time for your family, kids, your hobbies, I really have to say it, that really helps you to speed up matters and get things done. Off the desk, out of your brain, and you can start the next file or you just go home. See, that, that's what I really like with all the others, but you come, we, we will, you will come to the next slides and maybe then we talk a bit more about sparing time and using, using digitally. Thank you so much. Um, and in alignment with uh, Marcus just mentioned, Treasury eSign, EU qualified signature is legally recognized as equivalent to handwritten signatures. It provides ADAS compliant qualified signatures that are accepted in EU countries. As Aaron mentioned previously, our QTSP provider partner is Evertrust. The signer's identity is verified by them and the certificate is issued. And uh, obviously, this whole process uh, respects Treasury's commitment to zero knowledge policy and privacy, with, which means that the contents of signed documents are never accessible for anybody uh, apart from the intended parties by the request creator, of course. And if we move forward, we can also see and discuss uh, a bit more in connection to uh, Marcus also mentioned, the business problems that can be solved with such a solution include, of course, ensuring uh, the, the, the legal status of the documentation and uh, reducing security vulner vulnerabilities and uh, efficiency for the business. Now, Marcus, you are also a part of our uh, early access program for, uh, for this QES. Can you tell a bit more about why you decided to join that program? One of the reasons is that uh, number one, it's it's a new product which is in, innovative in in the business and not not only my business, in, in the whole EU business. Um, 
And uh, for me, in, in all my business, I'm, I'm not only a lawyer, but I'm a business consultant as well. Uh, I, I need security in both ways. When I get a paper which is signed by someone, I have to be sure and must be secure that this signature is from the person who set the signature. It's of, it's of utmost importance. With uh, this e signing and the EU signing and the president e sign, uh, you know it is secure. It origins from the person named on the e signature. And I, I compare it a bit with, uh, uh, with the blockchain technology. You see, uh, I love that. Well, why do you like uh, blockchain technology? Because you can trace for the next 150 million years that a document was uh, put into a file on a very special day, on a very special time, and nobody can change it. Same applies to e-signature. Everybody who is interested and uh, legitimate can uh, identify the person setting the signature. So in this case, it's uh, Evertrust, Austria is a trust, and then they say, you absolutely know who is the person who signed, when was it signed, and even what time of the day. Yeah, and I think this is a big, big advantage. That's all I can say to that. <laughs> and uh, then uh, as a kind of a summary of what uh, Marcus and I have just touched upon, um, the main benefits of, uh, of the solution is the guaranteed uh, assurance of an IDS compliant uh, document signed, the fact that it is uh, just as uh, safe and secure as a handwritten signature on a document, and obviously the increase in business efficiency and the fact that you don't need to, as said, print out documents, send them via post, and then as Marcus just mentioned, archive it in a cumbersome way and look it up again whenever you might need it. Well, you may add one more thing to all the participants of this webinar. Uh, I think it's very important that a lot of people start using this e-signature. The, the more people using the e-signature, the more accepted this will be uh, within the community. So please use it. <laughs> That's a really good point, uh, Marcus. So one of, as I mentioned in the beginning, you know, Treasure at eSign has been available on the market for a while now. Um, one of our customers, the Red Cross in Germany has been using Treasure at eSign, um, not the EU qualified signature, which is now an early access program, uh, but they saw tremendous efficiencies gained while using the product. Um, we did a case study together. One of the things I loved hearing was they described the process before using Treasure It, the amount of time it took, the amount of people that were involved, and then uh, talked to us about what, what the impact was after using Treasure It. And it really went from, you know, a two to three day process to two to three hours. Now, the reason that I'm mentioning this is because the Treasure It eSign uh, feature around EU qualified signatures is the exact same product, the exact same user interface, the exact same workflow. The only difference is we're introducing Evertrust as the certified trust provider where they can make sure that they have your you know, face recognition and your passport and following the AIDIS compliance. So it's not 100% exactly the same, but it's very, very close. And so the efficiencies that the Red Cross have been able to gain are what we expect for, you know, Marcus and, and others who are going to uh, leverage and benefit the EU qualified signatures. That being said, we're now going to take a look at the product in action. Um, so to make sure that we didn't have any demo effect, uh, which can occur from time to time, we did a recording. Um, before we jump into that recording, we wanted to show, you know, sort of the workflow when registering for Evertrust. So if you already have an Evertrust account, 
Uh, you don't have to worry. You would be ready to rock and roll and start utilizing. Uh, but if you don't, there is a one-time registration process that you have to go through. And this is where you're creating a PIN code. You're having your passport or your document scanned. You're having your face scanned. Um, you're getting it validated. And all of that is just a one-time setup. And then afterwards, when you start, you know, the process of requesting signatures and signing yourself, you don't have to do that again. Uh, and you're able to leverage the EverTrust mobile app or the EverTrust app in order to approve the signatures that are taking place. And that's what brings that additional layer of uh, compliance with EIDIS. So we're going to now take a look at a product demonstration. Uh, this is um, Treasurit's interface. And you can see eSign on the left-hand side here. So let's go ahead and watch somebody who's going to create a request. They're gonna select a file from Treasurit. It's gonna be an NDA in this example. They're gonna enter in an email address. So I'm sending this to Mia and I also need to sign it myself. I've selected QES as the qualified e-signature. And now I'm able to have a selection of fields in order to drag and drop onto the document itself. Uh, you have the you know list of options here and more that will be coming. Uh, once I've done that for Mia, I can now do it for myself. Uh, so I'm going to need to sign this NDA, and then I'm going to need to send it to Mia in order for her to sign it. At this point, I can sort of verify that I've done everything that I expected to do. I added the fields, and I'm now sending it off for a request. So I can copy that and then sign in in order to review and sign that document. So oftentimes you yourself have to sign a document that you're requesting someone else to sign. Uh, so in this case, I'm the one who's gonna be signing it. And there is my name, I'm applying the changes, I'm verifying the signature, and this is where EverTrust would come into play. Um, now, without being able to demonstrate the mobile app uh, in the webinar, I will show you what that looks like uh, after this demonstration. But at this point, now Maria has received it and she's gonna be able to go and countersign uh, the document. She can change the font. She has her initials. She applies the changes. And now also with EverTrust is gonna verify. Now you can see the level of security that's involved when this is all within the zero knowledge end-to-end -end encryption. And so when I receive notification that Mia has signed it, I'm able to view those details. I'm able to go to the signed document and I can now see uh, I have my NDA. It's been signed by both Aaron and Mia. And that's it. Um, so uh, during the demonstration, you saw, you know, the EverTrust uh, part of the workflow. When that comes up, you are then going to the mobile app. And at that point, you've already registered. Like I said, it's a one-time setup. You're all, all you're doing is entering your PIN code and clicking that nice green button. And then you have your successfully signed EU qualified so do document. All right. Uh, so at this point, we're going to now pivot and move on to the next uh, topic around digital evidence file sharing. And again, Mia, if you could uh, take us through some of the feedback that we've received. Of course, digital evidence file sharing as a use case focused solution, Vinasa with online video preview is again a great example of how user feedback and market needs influence our product development. Uh, the sharing and necessary controls around sensitive files has been an important focus for Trezorate. And upon listening to our users, we enhanced that feature set with video previews. Uh, adding watermarks and disabling downloads for the most valuable or sensitive files uh, shared during investigations, audits, or similar high stake dealings give our users peace of mind and provide information as well in the format of, for example, access logs. And uh, as you can see, the similar process we followed and I mentioned during the um, e-sign uh, part of this uh, discussion, I am, I am again uh, not relying on uh, the quotes, but I have Marcus here with me so that uh, I can turn to him and ask whether that kind of uh, 
control sharing of important files is and how is it is it important in your line of work? I believe Marcus, you're on mute. Sorry for that. <laughs> no um, problem. When you work with with a group of people, let's say in an M and A process, where you've got your you could as a lawyers, you've got parties, you've got tax advisors, consultants, and in the end, and uh, formerly you were working on the cloud, on the shared cloud, whatever. Uh, this these tools really allowed you to um, specifically uh, drop documents to special participants in this MLA process. Uh, with this feature, you have the possibility to share uh, selected documents to selected person. This is a big advantage because you don't have to pick it out. You don't have to send it by email to this very person. And this person answers you, then you put it back into the data room or whatever it is. Uh, you simply tell him, well, you, you give him, you allow him to access part of your uh, data room or documents, or in this case, uh, the uh, file sharing tool. And um, you can work on, on the spot. And that, that's a real good feature. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for sharing your thoughts on this one. And uh, another powerful example of how and when digital evidence file sharing is needed and can be uh, really appreciated is uh, the one we will be demonstrating through the example of an airport. In in case of a protest or other form of uh, vandalism happening, security footage uh, can be then uh, help further proceedings. And uh, it is, of course, uh, really important that uh, unauthorized access can be prevented. It is vital for legal, business, and ethical reasons as well. And uh, Having uh, done that in a safe, secure, and controlled way, again, speeds up the processes and providing clear overview of and control over what has been happening, what has been shared, just as Marcus mentioned, uh, is vital for business continuity and compliance reasons as well. And uh, this is why we, we introduced this additional bit of uh, video previews as it has been requested multiple times by our users. And uh, if we are to review the values and benefits of sharing such evidence and uh, other highly sensitive data I treasure it by uh, clicking on the next slide and having a idea of a listed uh, features, as you can see here, it, uh, it allows us for maintaining control and avoiding misuse. It uh, helps with ensuring tamper-proof evidence and uh, it is, in my experience, based on uh, talking to many users, very important in cases of uh, claims processing and uh, insurance dealings, that we can also uh, showcase and prove that, for example, uh, different uh, experts received the documentation at the same time, and then they had uh, the same amount of time and opportunity to review documentations. And, All right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Is and there that, something yes, else? You can move on. Okay, great. So, like I said before, uh, we're now going to take a look at the product in action. Um, one of the you know common themes that we heard from Marcus from the market, as Mia was describing, is um, a scenario where there is some evidence that you need to keep secure. You need to make sure is admissible in a court of law. Maybe you need to send it to an insurance company to make sure your claims get adjudicated and not denied. So um, the product uh, demo that we're gonna see right now is aligned with the use case that Zofi just, uh, or sorry, M Mia just mentioned. Um, so if we could imagine an airport scenario where there was a protest and maybe someone did some vandalism, right? That airport presumably has security footage 
And now uh, they need to be able to transfer that one video, let's say to a lawyer, uh, as well as to an insurance company. So that's a bit of the context where someone now is going to the security footage, they're going to December and they're finding the date of the video and being able to send that video. They're gonna select only the legal retainer that they're sending this to being able to access it. So no matter who ends up getting the link, it will only be that retainer um, who can click on it and actually access it. You can add watermarks, let's say mentioning it's confidential evidence, you can disable the download. And then once you either copy the link and send it, or we have integrations directly allowing you to send that email, you can send it over either to the lawyer or to the insurance company. And that link is not an attachment um, it's directly embedded and, you know, um, secure within the Treasury uh, ecosystem. So now the legal retainer who clicked on the link has to verify by entering the email, receiving a code, entering the code. And at that point, they can now view the video, which is in the browser. You can see there's no way to download that video, no tampering of evidence. You'll be able to see that there's a watermark. We had a little bit of fun and, and you can see the uh, the protest and the vandalism taking place here. Hope you enjoyed that little video. Uh, we'll now move on to the next part, which is around unified folder experience. So just to set the stage a little bit, uh, the, the product team, the R&D organization at Treasured had a, a real difficult decision to make because there was mounting requests that were coming in, which Mia will talk about. Uh, but just like any SaaS company, there is a level of technical debt that gets built up over time, making it harder and harder to introduce new features. The folder system within Treasure it is so critical to the overarching value that's provided that it got to the point in time where the decision was made, a hard decision was made, to go ahead and deal with that technical debt and introduce a new type of folder um, that is now available to everyone um, whenever creating a new main folder. And that allows for additional functionality to have been added, as well as put us in a position to accelerate and introduce new functionality to our folders at a much more scalable uh, way. So with that being said, uh, Mia, if you could uh, walk us through again, sort of the feedback and the, the product development life cycle. As you can see, we again followed uh, the same discovery and development process uh, I've been mentioning during uh, e-signature and digital evidence file sharing. But when it comes to unified folder experience, we needed to consider the many different scenarios in which users uh, want to share folders with their partners. Um, our users and best practices uh, both suggested that offering bigger flexibility around what and how to share is desirable. Hence, we analyzed, clustered, and synthesized that feedback. Some of the quotes uh, we've been actually hearing you can also see on the screen. Then we followed up uh, on the resulting themes with qualitative interviews about how those scenarios are in fact different and what makes it difficult to users and invited partners to find their folders and uh, the files that they look for within those folders. And uh, the missing links that is mentioned in one of the uh, one of the quotes, and the confusion around the capabilities of classical and next gen folders are great examples of why we set out to unify the experience. And uh, now what we used to call next gen folders uh, comes with share links, file request links, and the opportunity to invite external members so that it is once again unified and easier to understand an overview for both uh, treasury account owners and admins and users and their partners. And uh, if we are to review a use case based example, uh, moving forward, uh, we can also talk about how that uh, practical detail, like the right access provided to different folder types can be central in the business process. During, for example, an acquisition, or you can think of other but similarly sensitive business processes, it is not only important, but sometimes legally required that people can uh, only have access to some elements of the whole documentation. Now, with subfolder share, uh, we allow exactly for that by keeping the project management aspect simple. 
This means that the owner of the files can have the clear overview of the structure and manage the content of the different subfolders without having to create the complicated folders, folder structure just to make sure that uh, all invited partner, partners, experts, and involved members have the right access level. Thank you, Mia. Um, yeah, let's keep going. <laughs> And with that, uh, as a summary of, uh, of the Unified Folder experience, uh, this uh, in this example of the acquisition by a FinTech company, uh, the company can now invite collaborators to different subfolders with just a link without sharing the whole folder. And they can also generate file requests that will be then tied closely to the folder hierarchy without having to browse through all those, all those details. And obviously, just as uh, I mentioned with e-signature and uh, digital evidence sharing, with these developments, we aim to ease project management and increase business uh, capabilities, business continuity. So you can focus on what's really important for you and the tool is assisting you achieving that. All right. So now we get to see the product in action. Um, you know, I'll be honest, this was a difficult one uh, for us because we're talking about folders and subfolders. And it was really important to me that we didn't provide you with a demo that was just, hey, we've got a folder and we got a subfolder and you can share. And so we're trying to put a story around it. You heard Mia talking about the acquisition. So just to set the context, right? Um, we are going to tell this story, this acquisition story, through the product demo. And we can imagine that there's someone in charge leading the acquisition. And he's going to invite Bobby, who is the CTO. He's going to invite Estelle, who's the CFO. And he's going to engage somebody external who works for the company that's going to get acquired. Um, all of these people don't need access to all of the same folders. So... As the individual leading the acquisition, he's going to make sure that only certain people get access to certain information while providing a good user experience and allowing them to understand that they are within a folder system. They just can't access it. So let's go ahead and get into Special Project Phoenix. Code name. <laughs> so here, um, you know, the, the gentleman in charge of the acquisition can see everything. There's an NDA in the M&A folder. There's a PowerPoint presentation. And he's now going to invite the CTO, Bobby, to the development folder. Bobby is only going to be able to see that development folder. Someone else as the chief financial officer is going to be able to see the 2024 projections and have access to that file and that folder, but nothing else. And so Madam Wolf will be invited to that folder. At this point, you can see Aaron is uh, logged out and now Bobby has logged into Treasurit and he can accept the invitation to the folder. On the right hand side, he can see this is part of Project Phoenix, but the only thing he is accessing is the development uh, folder. Now, because they're acquiring a company, they need to share the new JIRA workflow with all of the engineers that are being acquired. Um, and so the CTO knows that that's important to him. Um, so he's moving that file into the development folder. He also understands that he's going to have to get a architecture specification or diagram from the company being acquired. So he is now creating a file request, which is one of the features within Treasurit. And he's gonna engage someone externally, the project manager that works at this other company and ask Maria to upload the file directly into the development folder. And so at this point, Maria is able to do that. She can click on the link, she can add the item, she can add the architecture specification. All of this is being done through end-to-end -end encryption with zero knowledge, but even for the group that is participating, they only have access. So now uh, Bobby, the CTO, can see the file request has showed up, can accept it, and it is now gonna be available within the development folder. So there you go. All of that happened in real time. And finally, Madam Wolf is able to accept the financial folder. She can see those projections. She can see she's part of Project Phoenix. 
But again, she's only gaining access to what she needs to do her job. Marcus, I, I will take a moment right now just to ask uh, what you think about all of this, um, as you had some interesting commentary uh, when we met the last time. Um, well, as I said before, and I think it was a bit uh, ahead of time because you were the evidence folder and I was a little bit talking already about this file sharing, which is for me, for my business, a very, very important tool. And uh, I, I have nothing to add what you said, Aaron. Um, you, you can uh, structure a deal more efficiently than uh, with, without such a tool. And the, the important issue is that the tool is easy to handle, easy to access. You don't need to be a scientific guy to find a folder, to go to a folder. And uh, I'm, I'm using the, the not the newest version because that is quite new with all the access stuff. But I'm, I'm using Preserit in a, in a high, highly sensitive case um, with parties, it's, it's litigation with parties from East and West. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's a really good tool to, it, it gives me safety, let's move a little, little bit this way. It gives me safety to allow access to one file, to one party, uh, to the other party, knowing that it's only this party being having access, being able to read what is in there, um, yeah, that is really, really gives gives you comfort. Me as a lawyer, in particular, uh, so I always know who who's I can see who who access the files. And I can and now you've got a more uh, fee, one more feature which allows me to invite actually uh, people to see special files or to upload files. Uh, it was possible before, but now it's more sophisticated what I understood. That you know, it's it's great to hear that feedback and your experience. And you know, part of what you said, I just want to reiterate and echo because oftentimes, you know, when we're talking to customers and prospects, the question does come up, you know, how do you differentiate and what is you know the value prop? And uh yes, we talk about intent encryption and zero knowledge, but we also talk a lot about usability. And I know, you know, maybe every company in the world will say, yeah, we're we're user friendly. Um, but there's a difference between saying that and there's a difference between actually providing it. And it becomes even harder. Uh, for anyone who is familiar with end-to-end -end encryption, to be able to offer the level of user-friendliness within the interface that you're seeing when it's also, old, you know, very secure end-to-end -end encrypted. You know, those two things often are juxtaposed to one another. So a lot of, you know, the new customers of Treasurit are coming from solutions that are just too hard to be able to be efficient within their business, um, but they don't want to trade off the security for the productivity. Um, so if we move on, uh, we're almost at the end here. This is the last part of the agenda. So for anyone who knows, Treasurit does integrate with Microsoft in several different ways. We have uh, four different types of integrations, email encryption, uh, Sentinel as a seam, one of them is being able to offer Trezor attachments within Microsoft. So for anyone who does want to share sensitive information, uh, but wants to do it, you know, using Trezor and the end-to-end -end encryption and zero knowledge technology, we allow you to leverage and benefit the value of Microsoft which you know, a very large majority of people nowadays within business are using, but also layer on some of the control and privacy and value that Treasurit offers. So what we've delivered um, is not that feature, which has been out in the market for a long time, but something for the administrative community within Treasurit uh, and a policy that allows them to have additional controls within all of the employees they work with. Uh, so me, or, I think I'm covering this one. Um, that's essentially the business problem. You know, how do you scale if you're working with 50 people and you either don't want them 
to have access. You do want them to have access. You want it to be mandatory. You want it to be automatic. We have built in some of these administrative capabilities that really allow our administrators with a click of a button to be able to ensure that everyone in the company is following the policy that works best for them. All right, so I think we're at the Q&A time. And so I'm gonna pull up some of the questions and I will take it from the top. Um, so the first one is, did you develop your own document scanner or do you rely on a third party for this? You know, this is a great question and it just goes back to the values of Treasure It and, and our DNA. And in this instance, because it's zero knowledge, because it's end-to-end -end encrypted, it is not through a third party, but something that we developed ourselves. The next question here, is Treasure It eSign included in the base product or is it a chargeable add-on? Um, that's a great question. I, I hope it's coming from someone who's uh, very excited and planning on uh, making this transaction. Uh, but Treasure It eSign is an application that you add on to the base product. Um, I think the, the ROI and the value of what you get uh, based on everything you heard from Marcus and um, is clear. Uh, the last question, great webinar, and thanks for having me. I was wondering if Treasure at eSign provide monitor logs, namely to see who and when some sign, for example, an NDA. And the answer is absolutely yes. And thank you for the compliment and for joining us. Um, those are the questions we received. I had one more question, uh, Marcus, for you, if you don't mind. Uh, again, because I'm new uh, and, and we did have a few conversations, but I never asked, how long have you been uh, utilizing Treasurate and with Treasurate as a customer? Um, I can't tell you, probably, to, to check my, my files, probably, exactly, uh, February 2022. Okay, great. Well, we can't thank you enough uh, for joining us today. Um, we value you as a customer. We value you as an early access member. Um, I'm going to take a quick minute uh, before we wrap it up, and I'm going to include a link for anyone who is interested in joining the early access program. You can click on this link and you'll be able to register. Um, we will also be following up uh, with an email that will include this link. Um, so thank you for spending the time with us. Happy holidays once again, and wishing you uh, the best and talk to you next time. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Maria. Thank you to the participants for participating. It's always exciting also for me to get a new tools and to be able to be in the early stage of a new development. Thank you for that. Thank you. Cheers.